Bang. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, we are recording. All right. And let me move this off. <coughs> cool, man. This is awesome, dude. Yeah. <laughs> this is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, talk about whatever we want to talk about, because I am joined today by um, a man of uh, impeccable playability <laughs> one of the nicest guys i've ever known um I, it definitely y- y- your name suits you mr darren joy <laughs> right yeah, yeah that that last name definitely suits you you you're um uh I, I definitely learned a lot from you and just like how you've 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 carried yourself like your personality with dealing with other people like you're, you're definitely full of love Yes. And I, I can I can feel that, um, cool. you know, from from the second I, I met you. <laughs> cool. Cool. Those um, were good. And those were uh, toddy times, too. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I tell I tell people, you know, the reason I, I got into at where we used to work at, mm-hmm. at the music store together. Um, the reason I got to kind of move up in, in the company, per se, was because you went through what you were going through. Yep. Um, so I, I don't know how deep you want to go into that. I, I did. I, I can. You good? Yeah, okay. Because yeah. I did mention um that i've had this idea of um burying like the past your your past self like who you've been and it yeah. and it came from a, a coolio song um the gangster's paradise okay yeah, yeah. um where he he has a line where it's like um you'll be lined in chalk and i was like lined in chalk like a dead body yeah and right, i was right. just thinking i was like man lined in chalk yeah put put and I, I was equating it, you know, because where my mindset has been is trying to improve, sure, you know, as much sure. as 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 sick of people are of hearing that. <laughs> but it, it's so I tell you what, if everybody had that same philosophy yeah. to try and put whatever was bad behind them and just try and be a better human being in, in any way, shape that fits them. Yeah. Can you imagine what kind of world we live in? It would be the utopia that people yes. say can't exist, and they can't. It, it won't exist because people aren't willing to put that effort. True. Yeah. It takes a lot, though. That it, effort. Oh it, my God! Yeah, yeah. It's not easy, man. No. It's not. no. no it's not. But you, 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 nose down. You know, trudge on forward. Just yep. trying to be better than yesterday. You're not trying to be the best. You're not no. trying to be perfect. We're just trying to be better than yesterday. Yep. Um. So that led me, th- those lyrics led me to like think of like, okay, well, you know, what can else can I do with like chalk, like lined in chalk? Yeah. I was like, chalk it up, chalk it up to the old you. So that per- right. that's who you, that's who you were, but you know what, who people had a vision of you in the past, like just chalk it up to the old you, like you, that's, that's not you anymore. So yeah. I have photos of, you know, liquor bottles and I have like, I want to do everything like, you know, cigarettes, um, hard drugs, gambling, mm-hmm. uh, sex, like, yeah. like just have examples of that and, and line it in chalk and like, um, you know, on some asphalt sure. and just make a little campaign about, you know, applauding people overcoming, you know, their addictions. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I'm glad that you were very receptive to that idea oh, and God. and open to speak about your own situation. Sure, sure. Um, so I don't know. I guess I'll kind of put it in in your hands. Well, and where do you want to take it from okay. there? Okay. Um, I, I I think for addiction wise, for me, and and there's a lot of different kinds of addiction out there, but for me, um, a few things that I've learned. Um, I just well, for one, I just celebrated three years. Awesome, of, man you know, of, of being off of drugs and alcohol. Yeah. And for me that I would have, if you would have asked me four or five years ago, would you ever, I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, <laughs> can't go three minutes. Yeah. Exactly. And so, you know, when you almost lose your life Yeah. and that's how it was, that's what finally got me to go, okay, I gotta do something, man. You know, because, um, I know I, I have potential. In, in something and yeah. no matter where I try and put myself I know there's potential there because I have that drive yeah but my drive was always clouded by drugs and alcohol mm-hmm. women the sex drugs and rock and roll yeah that, that well you're a rock star I mean you, you you're a shredder you're you That's, know people see you on stage and they want to hang out with you You know girls want to be next to like the, the badass lead guitarist and then guys are like well man this guy shreds on stage like i got some drugs like maybe yes. he'll hang out with me if i share my drugs with him like and it, that's how it was and it it seemed like that's how i grew up now when when you're young and when you're trying to be a rock star or whatever 
Um, what 18, 19 year old kid isn't going to want the sex, drugs, and rock yeah. and roll? And especially when you grow up knowing that your heroes are your, a little oh, bit closer. Sorry. Your, bring, bring it to you. Bring it oh, to okay. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That your, uh, your inspirations, that's how they were, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's like, okay, well, then that's how I have to do it. I mean, it's literally referred to as the rock star lifestyle mm-hmm. that, that live fast, die young. Like, yeah. it's literally what it's referred to. Exactly. And I just felt that, um, well, damn, I'm good at it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not just playing the guitar wise, but just everything else. And I loved it. Yeah. At a very young age, it was like, wow, God, th- this is awesome. And then you do little things and you meet people. And, and when you're brought up in that kind of environment, that's all you know. Yeah. So for 30 plus years of my life, that's all I knew. And even though I might not have been playing or trying to uh, overcome, I, I call it my stupidity of addiction. Yeah being locked up going to prison for two years still never getting it right when i got out um you know it's just what do you do you know and it's just like well okay i got locked up for a while well let's go out and try and be smarter and to me that's the insanity of addiction yeah to do the same thing and expect a different result yeah there's just there's no different result you know um a few people have asked me he goes well why can't you just party on the weekends and stuff? Like that? Oh, I can't. Yeah. I can't. I know that now. Yeah. And I have tried in the past to try and do that. You know, like even when I started working at Guitar Center, I wasn't that bad at first. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like I was kind of, yeah, I was smoking pot, you know, and, and on the weekends, you know, staying up all weekend. Yeah. But then after a while, it's like, oh, shit. Now we're drinking Jaeger and vodka and all that. Yeah. And that just catapulted me off to the uh, really bad end. You know, um, cause it always starts out. Okay. Yeah. You know, it, it was like my new job at guitar center. Okay. Finally I'm working. I can't make the band thing happen yeah. because we were all too fucked up and I was too fucked up. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, okay. Got the job at guitar center and all of a sudden it's like, okay, I'm, I'm talking about music. If mm-hmm. you're a musician and you're doing that, then yeah, you're going to be kind of good at it. Yeah. And then, okay, I want to move up. I want to do to get some notoriety here. Yeah. And I was able to do that. But the, the real funny thing about addiction that I have found, especially with other people with addiction, is that you self-sabotage. Yeah. And you don't, you don't see it coming. You think you're being smart and you're like, oh, I got this figured out. It's not going to happen this time. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it, uh, the, the one part that, uh, that uh, really comes to mind when I was at Guitar Center I don't know what happened and it probably wasn't even that bad, but I just said, fuck it. Yeah. I'm done with everything. And I went and laid up in a, in a hotel for what, three days with a bottle of vodka and some drugs and stuff. And then all of a sudden I'm calling Bill Frazier at the time and, yeah. and I'm like, uh, forget, or I don't even remember what, but just frivolous bullshit. Uh-huh. You know? And, um, the, the cool thing that I will say through all my addiction is that, the people that I did come across with, they kind of saw something in me that I never saw. Yeah. You know that, well, dude, man, you can do this. You just got to not do that. Well, I could not not do that physically and mentally. <coughs> yeah, it was part of, like you said, it was part of the lifestyle you grew up in and the people that you idolized. So if you yeah. wanted to be like them mm-hmm. or aspiring to be, you, you kind of, Hey, you felt like you had to do it. And then at one point, like, your, your, your body took over and was just yeah. like, yeah, we need to do this. I, I have to have that in order to do this. Yeah. I have to get up in order to make the day do what I do. And then after that's where the cloudiness and, and the, the false sense of, I, I want to say existing for me, that that's just a false sense. And, um, it just got to where, you know, it, it just about killed me. After okay. all those years, you know, and finally it just all of a sudden everything caught up bad. Yeah. And I went through some bad stages. Of course, you know about, you mm-hmm. know, when I went through those two weeks of like, I, I just couldn't physically do anything. Yeah. But yet I was still drinking, still trying to do the drugs and, you know, because that would get me going and nothing was working. Yeah. So it was more of a, uh, um, a mental thing. So. It's like the drugs and alcohol weren't wrong. It's what was in here that was wrong Mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. me. 
So, um, you know, when everything catches up to you and then you kind of go through that and then you lose people that you love in your life that don't want to have anything to do with you and all of a sudden they're changing their life and yeah. then there's abandonment issues like, oh, my God, what's wrong with me? And so, you know, it didn't matter if something was bad, then, oh, man, what a reason to get more fucked up. But yeah. if something's good, what a great reason. You yeah. know? So it didn't matter. It doesn't, right? You know, and so that's where that that um, thinking of, well, this is what I do. So everything, no matter what's going on, is OK, you know, and everybody parties. Yeah, of course. It's just, I'm the guy that doesn't stop when mm -hmm. everybody else can. And it took me 30 plus years to figure that out. Shit. And almost dying. So, how many, like, life, near near death or life ending experiences would you say that you you were under when, when you were using? Was, was basically well, the last one was like... Yeah, that was it. Because... I'm sure there were a few other times, but I just didn't have the clarity to really like, it didn't hit me that hard to yeah. where it was like, Oh, okay. Well, my body couldn't handle that. Okay. Time to recoup and do it all over again. Yeah. So that's where that insanity comes from. Mm -hmm. So it's what happened on this last time is that, um, I was drinking way too much for a skinny white boy like me. Seriously. <laughs> I was drinking a bottle of Jaeger, a full, the big bottle yeah. and vodka plus doing whatever drugs I could get, whether it was pills, speed, um, or uh, I think I did heroin once. Never put yeah. a needle in my arm, but I smoked it. Okay. Um, and it just, it, you know, the alcohol, I think, took over the most. And is what happened is that um, I blacked out, and uh, I woke up on the kitchen floor of the house where I was living. There was blood on the floor. And um, I split my head open in the back. Damn. And, um, and all of a sudden, it's like I, I thought I had an earache, okay? So I tried to go to work, but I, it was like my equilibrium was off and everything. And I was like, oh, man, I, I got to drink some. Because I, I didn't really know if anything was really wrong. Uh -huh. So the next day, I went to the hospital. And uh, they told me I fractured this bone behind your ear. What? Yeah, so now I can't smell or taste anything. No, hold up. You can't right now. Yeah. You, like, you can't smell or taste anything. Nope. Mm -mm. I can sense I can sense it because I think that's the muscle memory. Yeah. But ever since that happened, I cannot smell or taste. Oh, my God. I can sense, like, spicy stuff. Yeah. Um, salt. I can sense that. But I can't, like, taste, uh, like, barbecue sauce or, or chocolate oh or things. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dude. Okay. So when they told me that, I was like, well, we're, we'll give you some uh, something to uh, keep my equilibrium right. Yeah. So it's what I did. And this is when I was working at Walmart. And it's what I did. I was like, okay, I told them what was up. And uh, they got me. I, I, it was something because I was dizzy. I couldn't, you know. So I went home, got more Jaeger. Jaeger was my favorite. And yeah. I also had a bottle of vodka. And um, for a week and a half straight, um, I just sat in my room in total just oblivion. Um, and there was no sense of clarity, no sense of, of uh, life. Yeah. You know and ha had you, at this point, had you alienated a lot of people? Was, were people trying to get a hold of you? Yes, yes. There, there were. Yeah. Um, um, and plus, I just broke up with a really cool girl that I was with. Um, her name was, uh, Charlotte and, um, you know, I, I, of course when you're messed up and everything, you think everybody, Oh, I love, I mean, yeah, I do love, I love, love. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm one of those guys. And, but I was too messed up to love anybody the right way as far as a relationship. Yeah. So is what happened. Um, I, it, it just, it went bad, but we were still friends Yeah. and I'm so grateful and thankful for that. I can't, I will it's just it's amazing but anyway so she was trying to get a hold of me um uh, another friend of mine angie charles that she was like my co-worker uh -huh. um she came over one night and um i think i i had this uh, ovation acoustic uh -huh. that i had forever in fact i, I got it at when we were still at, at tempe guitar center and she came over and i had the thing busted up and i don't even remember that 
like smashed smashed in my room my hands were all bloody and everything i guess i beat it up because uh oh, da, da, da. Yeah. you know i'm a victim yeah this and that my life is all messed up you know i'm playing that and the more i drank or the more i did just it it, it almost um it made that sense true mm -hmm. you know um because that's where my mind was nothing was going right i i couldn't take accountability for my own stuff it, yeah. everything was everything else yeah, yeah that was bad well this did she didn't do you know and then all of a sudden it's like i'm my mind always um would go to well that's how i grew up my parents raised an addict my parents blah, 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 you know yeah and that's that's the easy way out. it is the easy way out. that's it's so easy to blame everything else on everybody else that way you can do what you want to do to be mm. fucked up however whatever way yeah um and so anyway so about a week and a half goes by and um the lady uh, that i was living with she was like, I sold the house. And I kind of remember that. And I'm like, okay. And, uh, and she'd always like, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm fine. Just fine. Just, I'm fine. Whatever. Yeah. You know? And, um, and I remember that I was going to drive out to Surprise to go see a friend. Um, and I was going to go pick up some more drugs and stuff. Yeah. And um, somehow I went... I finished off a bottle of Jaeger and they didn't at the one circle cave was my, where I'd always get my stuff. They didn't have the big bottle of Seagram's. So I got four of the little bottles of Seagram <laughs> and, um, I sat in my car, I downed two of them and I was like, some, I, I don't know what led me to the banner hospital. It's a, it's still really, um, blurry but somehow i ended up at the banner hospital and i was driving too yeah and thank god i didn't you know hurt anybody or or anything like that yeah or even get pulled over for a dui during that whole time yeah um so somehow i i ended up at banner hospital and i remember going in there and i just was in you know where you go admit yourself i'm like you know, if this is how my life is going to be, fuck this, fuck that. I don't want to live anymore. You can all screw up. And then the lady comes walking around. And I remember this, too. She comes walking around. She goes, okay, come. And security came, and I blacked out. Yeah. And then the next thing I know is that I'm waking up in the ER, and they're saying, you're lucky to be alive. What, what was your BAC? Um, Do you remember? No. Uh -uh. I'm sure it was out of but i uh, i was also coming down from being up too long uh -huh, yeah. i think i i did some uh took some percocets and i think Damn. there was a oxy in there or something you know it was just Good and Lord. this was yeah right and so um i i remember coming to it and this this is what really gets me is that the whole time i was out and i don't know why i remember this but i remember you know how some people say well when you die you see your life flash before your eyes I saw these visions. Uh -huh. Okay, my parents are all passed away, but I remember. See, I get goosebumps telling this. I remember giving me goosebumps, yeah, man. But I remember this so vaguely is that my mom and dad were looking down at me, and they go, "What are you doing, Darren?" <laughs> you know, and I'm just and and you know when I came to after when I kind of you know got my bearings and the nurse was like, "You're lucky to be alive," and and. And I'm like, I remember laying there and I'm just like, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. What am I doing? And uh, that was in September, um, uh, September 16th. Coming up. Yeah, 20, no, that was in September of 2016. Yeah, but, oh, September, uh, of, okay. Of 2016. Oh, they were saying September 16th because I was like, that's just right around the corner. No, no, it was September 3rd. Third. Oh, so it just passed. Yeah, yeah. But it was 2016. Yeah. And it was my 50th birthday. You know, <laughs> so I mean, there were all these little factors that yeah. kind of played into it. It's like, okay. Um, and so I was like, okay, what, what am I going to do? Now, mind you, in my past, when I, when I was getting in trouble and being locked up, well, you need to go to, you know, this halfway house. You need to get yourself in a program and all that. And I did those little things yeah. off and on throughout the 90s. 
but it, it never it never clicked. It never took. No, because I wasn't ready. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I got to do something. And I remember talking to, God, I wish I could remember her name. Um, but the nurse was saying, oh, we can get you help. And I'm like, I need, I need help. And uh, I finally said that to yeah. her. I, I don't want to die. I don't. Totally opposite of how you walked in. Yeah. I don't want to die like that. Now, I'm not saying I was suicidal. All I know is that I didn't want to live how I was living. Oh, uh, okay. You know, it wasn't like I was going to hang myself or something like that. Yeah. But, but I, I just knew that I just didn't want to live like that. But I didn't know how to live any way else. Yeah. You, like you say, you've been doing it for 30 plus years. You know, and finally it just, and, and I'm grateful that, um, that it happened that way. Because a lot of people don't make it that, out yeah. that way. And in my last three years of, of, you know, changing my life, I've seen, you know, a few people die. Yeah. Because they, it just didn't happen that way for them. So, you know, um, when I say I'm beyond grateful and thankful yeah. just to be alive and have this second chance at life, I, I can't tell you how much, you know, and, and, and sometimes my messed up thinking gets to me. It's like, well, why me? Yeah. What, what yeah, did yeah. I do? Yep. You know? And, but that's my, my messed up thinking. So with all those little things, I've had to learn how to live a different life and how to change my mindset. Yeah, you know, that's key. It is key. That's the whole key to wanting to change. Yeah. Because if, if, if you don't change, nothing. Yeah, because the changes. facts are still the same. The facts Always. are still there, but it, you change the way you view them. Mm -hmm. And instead of, like you said, playing that victim mentality, you're like, okay, well, this is what, I'm, what I have to deal with. Like, mm -hmm. let's buckle down and, and Do just yeah. get, move forward. Had to, had to, had to, had to. But it's also made me... Um, reevaluate the things that were messing me up um to way to where how i was thinking and that's been um it's work man and, yeah. and i think when you do something like that and you're working on yourself whew, there's some things that uh, you just don't want to like oh man i did that why you know or this or that the ugly truth yeah it is ugly yeah. and then it's like oh my god I, it's so easy to sit there and fix somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> it's a piece of cake, dude. Well, just don't do that, man. Don't, <laughs> you know, whatever the case. Yeah. But when you try and look inward and try and, and, and figure out what's wrong with you. And, and the key thing is honest, honesty. Yeah. For me, um, everybody has their own way, what, however it gets them. But for me, I had to be honest. I, I freaking had to be honest with myself mm -hmm. and that's hard. Yeah. It's very hard Super to be hard. honest with yourself. Yeah. Look, look in the mirror, stare at that person looking, you know, back at you and, you, you know, got just to though. I mean, for me, I had to, and, yeah. and I know for other addicts and other people in different things, that's what they had to do. And that's what was suggested to me. And that's the work that I know I, I have to continue for the rest of my life because for me, addiction isn't cured right now. It's like, oh, I'm not doing drugs and alcohol. Good, I'm good. No, yeah. you're not. It's a man. constant battle. It, well, it's not so much the constant battle of um, the drugs and alcohol. It's, it's the, the ever-changing of this. Because I know for me, I could, on a drop of a dime, go back to how things were. And I have to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Because it could be... Oh my socks, you know, whatever the, I mean, yeah, something stupid yeah, like trivial. that. Trivial. Yeah. And I know that for me. So I have to be that, that was a hard thing to learn, you know, because for me, it's like, well, no, I'm a strong dude, man. I'm duh, 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 duh. no, man, I'm not. When yeah. You were out here own. out drinking people. You were staying up longer than they were. You were doing mm -hmm. more drugs than they were. So yeah, yeah you're just like, what are you talking about? Dude, come on. I'm a tank. <laughs> right. Exactly. But you know, it, it, and those are the harsh realities. So the, the most beautiful thing for me is that when a person has a sense of clarity, you know, and there, there are some people that I, I, I see that had that. And I'll probably put you on the spot. Like, you know, when, when I met you and when we started working together and whatnot, 
And now to see you now, you're a family man, you're a dad, you got a beautiful wife, two beautiful kids. Yeah. To me, that's like, oh my God, well, you know? And those are things I've never had, you know? And, um, uh, and with Paul Bittner, same thing, man. Yeah. He's married, now he's got a kid and everything. And to me, that's, that's pure, uh, uh, God, there's so many words I could use, but just, it's beautiful, dude. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And I think that's where I love, that's love. That's pure, unconditional love. Mm -hmm. No matter how you look at it, man, that's just, uh, wake up every day and just, to, uh, man, I fucking love you, you know? Mm, and I know yeah. that sounds so cheesy and corny. Wait, but it'd be so easy for you to be, like you said, like you've never had that. So you could easily look at those pictures and just, you know, have envy and be like, hey, mm -hmm. like, why not me? Like, like exactly. we said earlier. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, why isn't that me? That could be mine. And then, you know, that's where that hate can kind of thrive. And, and also that self-sabotage yeah. as well, because I can't tell you how many relationships with women to where I've wanted that, but I just wasn't right in here mm -hmm. to have that, you know? And, you know, people have asked me, well, why don't you have any kids? And I'm like, well, you know what? That's probably a good thing. It is, yeah, you know? I would say it is. I, I think so too. As much as like, I, I will, well, who knows? Maybe, you know, that could have been what you needed or Maybe. it could have changed you, but also no. it, it could have, yeah. And, and that's not how I would want it to have been a father or a parent yeah you know um and now it's like now it's like oh man god i gotta find me a young thing and nugger up <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know that's not where that's at but you know it, it's it's crazy to me how one one can view themselves through all their despair and all their tragedy and everything and for somehow hang on to it mm -hmm. but i understand it now yeah, that's the key. You understand. You, so you don't have to like, A, ex accept it or agree with it or, I don't know, condone it, right? Right. But you well, can just say, I understand where you're coming from and exactly. I can understand why you, why you do it or why you did it mm -hmm. and just have that acceptance of them still, of who they are. Yeah, and also with oneself too. Because uh, I, I guess I could say this on here. I'm, I'm, I'm an avid um, person with a Narcotics Anonymous. Uh, yeah. Um, so um, I'm a part of that program because that's what's saving my life. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not one of those guys that's going to go stand on a soapbox and go, oh, you people, you need to know that. That's yeah. not what it's about. But for me, it's like I, I again, I had to find something to to figure out how to live a different life because I, I needed that. Yeah. And so when that came into um, my life and I got to meet some incredible people that are like-minded going through the same things that I've gone through and have shown me how to, uh, you know, if, if you just get, get, give this a try, you know, and it's, you know, and an honest try. Yeah. And, and the three principles, or I, I like to, the program calls them spiritual principles or mm -hmm. honesty, open-mindedness and willingness. Mm hmm. Um, and I believe that if you have those three things and no matter what you're trying to do with your life, you've got a pretty good shot at it. And, and, um, for me, um, negativity always seemed to be a part of my life because that's what I was surrounding myself with. Even though I wanted to be positive and have a positive outcome, you can't do that if you're surrounding yourself in especially in your head with negativity and stuff like that for me so it's like i, I get up and i'm just like man today's gonna be a good day now i don't want you to get me wrong it's like nothing's all fucking rainbows puppies of and course unicorns, man it's not that yeah. way but i tell you what with life's uh trials and and, and stuff now it's like bring it man you know because i i, I feel that i can do it no matter how tough things get. You yeah. Know? Um, you, you've been through some harder shit is basically what you're saying, do, you know? You know, and the, another big thing I think with all that is just realizing that things can be better, but you've got to make them better. Mm -hmm. If you feel like, oh man, this is going to screw up. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, mm -hmm. You know what? It, you're not giving it a chance. Yeah. But I, I feel that if you go into it and you're like, if you're excited for something different 
and you have a positive outlook and if it doesn't pay off that's okay man it, it you know what i'm saying it, mm -hmm. life happens yeah good and bad but it's all how you take it your own perception of it and for me um i was hanging on to a lot of bad shit in my past my mom died because of drug addiction yeah um you know when my dad passed away i was there by his bedside you know so all those yeah. things and i played into that yeah and i'm not saying that that's not what i should i mean things happen for the way they did mm -hmm. but i hung on to that and it, it kept me at a very uh dark place man and uh you know it, it's i i don't want darkness man. yeah well those are two of the hardest things to go through you know losing a mom the way she went mm -hmm. and then losing a father like yeah. how old were you um when my mom passed away i believe i was 20 something okay and when she did we had an argument on the phone oh. and and then the next thing i know i'm getting a phone call saying that she mm. yeah so that was something yeah that 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 i pretty much i i think i came to terms with that i still have more to work on but i've yeah. come to terms with that um a, a while ago and um then when my dad passed away he uh, died of septic shock and that came very unexpectedly oh, yeah. um but at that time i was at a point to where um i was on uh probation and i hadn't gotten high or so he did get to see me um not high or messed up before yeah. he did pass away but my sister and i we had to go up to sholo because he was in a coma and mm -hmm. he was on all these life support things and um so that you know to just say okay this is what has to happen yeah and um that wrecked me dude that that was tough because my dad and i weren't always close but we started to get close towards the end yeah um because when my parents got divorced when i was 10 i was living with my mom okay and um my sister was with my dad so my mom was a party animal she was you know it's like she grew up all over again yeah so you know um drugs so and alcohol they, they get married young like was your mom young when she yeah, got married uh, so. when my mom and dad got married i believe my mom was 18 or 19 yeah and my dad was just out of the service and this was back in the 50s uh-huh so that's kind of what you know people did back then yeah and um so uh my mom was just my mom was a very uh uh i, I <laughs> she she reminds me of that era of like, uh, you know, the kind of bad girl, voluptuous, blonde, you know, because Marilyn Monroe was big back then. So yeah. That's kind of how my mom was, you know, and so, and uh, the, the cool thing, uh, my dad and I had a conversation um, before he did pass away. Um, and uh, it was just him and I one night. And, uh, you know, it, it was like him and I finally bonded and I got to ask him about like, how did you mom mean you know my dad well i was working at the doggy diner and your mom came in and it was like Duh, and i'm like oh okay and, you know <laughs> it's like okay they're right on that's cool but uh you know it, it's so when they did get divorced she was still young and so she had like all these things opened up to her and so that's where her addiction came into play yeah. alcohol drugs and at that time in and uh, back in the 70s when she was, you know, that's when they got divorced. So that whole era of the partiness and whatnot. And she was um, all about the music. She, I mean, she was my biggest fan. Yeah. She's the one that got me my guitar, um, you know, and she was always at my shows, like when I was playing, you know, and my mom's not a metalhead, but at that time she was. She's totally in support of you. Oh, man, she was. Um you know so but my dad was always like well no you need to have a trade my dad was very military yeah for sure you know so he was very uh uh a very stout smart gentleman mm -hmm. you know um very soft-spoken but when he spoke you know it's like you listen oh shit. You know? yeah. so I'm, I'm grateful for that because I, I think i learned a lot of my uh mechanical ability and, and stuff like that from him yeah to where it, it, it's it's almost like the best of both worlds Here's my dad, you know, this very, you know, military kind of, you know, very self-disciplined man. Mm -hmm. And then my mom, this party animal, 
you know, so I, I kind of meld those together and ta-da, this on, is what you get. Yeah, on the creativity. <laughs> yeah. She was more on the create, yeah. uh, creative side, like spunky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just a young girl growing up all over again. Yeah. So as I was growing up, you know, she was too when, when I look back at it. So yeah. it took me a long time to realize that and not um, play the victim anymore. Yeah. Or, or res- resent her, I guess. For, yeah, yeah, because I was mad when she passed away because of her drug addiction. Um, I was mad. I was like, what? No, no, you know, because uh, uh, all my, and, and I know this is going to sound bad. My mom was an awesome lady, but she wasn't like your typical mother figure. Yeah. I wasn't abused as a kid, but there were drugs in my household growing Just up. Just stuff you shouldn't have been exposed yeah, to. But it, it was there. And it was nothing for me to come home, say, hey, mom, you, you, got, a, you got any of the whatever left or any of that. And she's mm-hmm. like, yeah, here you go and whatnot. And that's just how it was. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I was never abused as a kid. I didn't have those kind of issues. Mm-hmm. It was just that was the environment. And, and it, it's almost like, well, you, you know, if you're going to be around that as a young child and there's music and everything. And my mom was all about, you know. Uh, musicians and, and mm-hmm. biker dudes and whatnot. And so, you know, I, I learned a lot of respect, but I also learned how to, how to party yeah, how know, to party. and how to play and, and how to uh, be in that stuff. So, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it, it's taken me a long time to just look at it and go, okay, well, that's just how it was, man. I, yeah. I'm not a victim. You're a product of your environment, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And some people are smarter than others. To where they're like, well, no, I know that's not right. Well, no, I, I didn't know it wasn't right. All I knew is that I loved it. And this was yeah. how the enjoyment and how people were if I surround myself with these liked people. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's how the rock and roll scene was. Yeah. You know, and especially in the 80s growing up in Southern California. <laughs> Forget me? about it, man. Forget, right, exactly. You know, and and there's a, there's a certain attractiveness about that whole era but when you were in it nobody ever thought about like oh man i can't do this or i can't do it no you do it man you god anyway yeah so pure debauchery and everything but it was you know that's how it was yeah so how old were you when you first had your your first taste of a drug um i believe i was 12 years old 12 was that alcohol or was that no it was it was uh weed Okay. It was weed. Um, I wasn't really much ever a drinker because um, I just couldn't handle alcohol then. Mm-hmm. So I grew up with weed. And at the time before meth or, or speed came in, there were uh, pills called Cross Tops, Black Beauty, and their, uh, you know, am- amphetamine Amphetamines, pills. yeah. And back in the day, and my mom was really into that. So I did that. Um, and plus, cocaine was really big back then. And Quaaludes, seven one fours, and you know, but there was always weed. I was a big pothead growing up, um, but anytime those other things came into play, I was you know, uh, when I lived on Catalina Island, I think that's when I went through my cocaine phase. You know, it didn't. It got out of hand because I'm an addict, and when I'm all in, I'm all in. So yeah. I went through like a whole summer of like that's all I wanted, blah 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 blah, and uh, and that's where I met. Uh, my girlfriend and then my first wife yeah, at that time. And it was all about cocaine. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, on our wedding, we did cocaine. <laughs> you know, it's just like great. We were young kids though. You know? Yeah. And that's how, how old we were you when you got married? Uh, I believe I was 21, yeah. 20 some or early twenties. And so was she. That's young. Uh, yeah. That's young. But she was my first love. Oh my mm. God. I, and I remember that cause we met on Catalina Island and, uh, I always felt like, and, and I always grew up this way that I wasn't good enough. Yeah. It's just like, she, this girl was out of my league. Do you think that might've been a little bit from your father on how like militaristic he was? And you Probably always felt like you couldn't, you know, I mean, th- those, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those, some yeah. of those standards from, from, you know, parents like that. Yeah. And, and from how they grew up probably. Yeah, most definitely. Um, because my dad was very much a realist, mm-hmm. you know, um, not saying that he would ever say, well, 
you know, playing guitar, that's fine, but that's, you're never going to get anywhere. So you need to have a trade. My dad was an aviation electronics engineer. Uh So, you know, he had the trade, you know, he, uh, had all that. So, but I didn't. And then when my parents got divorced, I was 10 and, um, you know, it, it was all about, oh, my God, this is music, guitar, music, ah, kiss. Yeah, who doesn't love music, man? You got to be a weirdo. Exactly. But it, it was like that's how I knew, especially at a young age, that I loved it. And I think I'm good at it mm-hmm. I, because I understood it, you know. And, uh, and it's just that's how it's been. Because it, it, to me, it was like no matter how messed up I was, I knew I was always good at guitar. Yeah. I mean, I'm no Eddie Van Halen, but, but, I, but you know <laughs> what I'm saying? You're damn close. But, you know, it's like I know I can do that. Yeah. So it, it's like that was always my end to mm-hmm. people. Yeah. It was like, well, I can't really, uh, you know, do much of anything else, but I can play guitar. But I can entertain the shit out of you. Yeah, but yeah. at the end of the day, like I've had this conversation with a few people and, you know, I've heard it on a couple of podcasts, but it's like. At the, uh, at the end of the day, humans live for art, to create and consume art. You know, we work, yeah, you work your trade or you work, mm-hmm. you know, a specific job. But to do what? To earn money, to go out and watch live music, to watch a movie, to pay for your direct TV so you can enjoy somebody creating art, yes. you know? So that's, it's, that's what we're there for. So for people to, like, you know, look down on somebody wanting to create art, Mm-hmm. you know to entertain somebody or to touch somebody and you know they look down on that and it's like bro like that's what we live for as humans yes and i think the most beautiful thing as far as an art form it's universal yeah. it doesn't matter anywhere you go in the world there's always some sort of that everywhere and that everywhere er, er, everywhere it doesn't matter where you go mm-hmm. you could go uh, you know the ends of the earth <laughs> It's, there's still going to be some sort of artistical something there, whether it's music, uh, uh, whatever, paintings, yeah. or, or, you know, some sort of artisticness. Mm-hmm. And to me, that is just, um, that, that, that's heart and soul. You yeah. know, that, that, that's something that's... Well, like you said, it transcends um, culture, language, art, you know, yeah. art does, whether it's music... Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say literature because you'd have to translate it, but, yeah. you know, paintings, just everything yeah. like that. And um, everything has some sort of artistic um, things, yeah. even back to, you know, back in the d- way back in the Yeah, day. they're painting on the fucking walls with yeah. their shit. Uh-huh, exactly. <laughs> you know? You know oh, wow. And I, I can only imagine what, how they were saying that, but it was like if somebody painted some cool shit on a wall yeah. in a cave, I bet you there was like all, your whole other tribe going damn that's good yeah. who did that and the other guys go oh i did it you know but you know that's i think that's just how it is and and it's just i think that's a very humanistic yeah uh inside uh soul thing. yeah it's just inside us yeah. to do that yeah. um so your first love do you still keep in contact okay so here's the cool thing about that uh-huh is that um so when i was married at that young age um, I had no business being married um, in that sense because the way I look at it now, when if you're married, you, you, there's no infidelity. Mm-hmm. There's no sneaking behind. Mm-hmm. Um, there's none of this and none of that. And um, I was just a young guy who was um, had the opportunity to be with lots of other uh, women at the time when I was married, and that's wrong. Um, So the cool thing with her is that um, I was able to get a hold of her through Facebook um, and really just lay it all out there. So the beautiful thing with that is that um, she's she's there and she, you know, we've had long conversations um, and she, you know, made sense. But the cool thing about it is that I uh, I was apologizing for how I was. I didn't go into detail, but we yeah. both know how I was. Yeah. And the most, she goes, I forgave you a long time ago. Oh, man. You know? And so for me, I also hung on to that because she was my first love. And we all know our first love. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was, hands down. Yeah. Um, and I fucked that up bad and i hurt her yeah and that breaks my heart man 
it, it just, and, um, and here, here she is, you know, she's, she remarried, she has a daughter, she also went through another divorce, and, you know, for a woman that's, what we went through, and then for her, you know, to tell me, I forgave you a long time ago, mm -hmm. and so, uh, I keep in contact with her, I, I, you know, once a month, or, you know, we're on Facebook, and, yeah. and, uh, for me, I always want to let people know that I love them. Yeah. And I get that. Like every day, I, you know, when I scroll through my feed, I mean, it's nothing but positivity and love yeah. coming from you. You know, and it, it doesn't, you know, why are you telling me you love me? Well, you know, <laughs> you know how many, how many different realms and levels of love there is? Tons. And not only that, but like endless for you to live with the fact that the last time you talked to your mom was an angry conversation like that's gonna, you know, dictate how you, how every, yeah. all your other interactions kind of go down from it, there. Exactly. So, um, but then again, it's like, I, I, I know I, I, it's like now my thing is I tell people it's like, I'm a lover, not a fighter, <laughs> but I'll fight for love. You know? <laughs> you know, chicks dig that, you know, yeah. but, uh, but it's true for me because I feel it's important, especially because of all the messed up things and maybe people that I've heard along the way, no matter if it's who I've worked with or, mm -hmm. you know, um, who I have played with. And if there's an opportunity to let those people know, especially now in, in, in what I'm trying to do is to let them know that I, I can only, I, I can't change anything of the past. Mm -hmm. There's nothing I can do about it. Mm -hmm. All I can do is hopefully apologize. Yeah, ask for forgiveness for who you were and yeah, the actions. And, and whatnot, but also be better. Yeah. You know, that's all I can do. And um, I know a lot of people get hung up when they're, when they're going through a addiction or trying to change their lives is that, man, I, I, I want to apologize. And some people don't want to hear it, man. Some people are hurt that bad. But yeah. you have to accept that because you're really apologizing for yourself. Yeah. And, and yes, you do hope that they will accept it and they'll go, hey, yeah. man, I get it. Mm -hmm. And um, but, the, you know, the, the big thing is that, you know, some of the most important people that you need to apologize aren't here anymore. Yeah, that too. Right. So, you know, uh, those are things that for me, I have to work on. And I'm finding little ways, mm -hmm. you know, um, there's a certain sense of uh, calmness with me when I have to deal or, or, or take on certain things that, you know, okay, I need to deal with this Yeah. because it, it, I can feel it. it, it there's a, a certain sense of awareness that I have now and clarity that I can feel inside me to where things are going, okay, I, I, I need to somehow address this, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So you're not shoving that down anymore no, you know? or, or giving into it or not no, noticing that there's uh, something that's it just doesn't feel right so um, you know I, I try and stay in tune with that mm -hmm. big time because for me just <laughs> looking back at my past man had I known then what I know now ugh. but you know, the, the one thing that I do tell a lot of people that are in the program and that I've been able to help is that all we have is right now. Mm -hmm. Life is happening and all you have is right here, right now. Yeah. So everything that I've done in my past, good, bad or whatever, it's got me to here mm -hmm. with you right now. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's huge. Um, and I don't look at it too much to where I, I'm going to overanalyze it or anything like that. All I know is that it is this is what it yeah. is. You can kill yourself replaying scenarios and how you could have handled something different. And yeah, you, dude, you I, can, I can't tell you how bad of an over analyzer I can be. <laughs> and it, it's just, it's dangerous for me because it's the, uh, again, you know, when you have that feeling of you're not good enough, you're less than, um, why aren't I, Ugh, you know, this big burly six pack muscle bound dude, you know, or, or stuff like that. Because also growing up, I was always um, teased a lot because I, I'm skinny. I'm a skinny white boy, man. That's how I've been my whole life. Yeah. And then at a young age, the only thing that I had that people would like is me playing guitar. Yeah. So, 
you know, I wasn't that that beach dude that was all ripped and pecked out. Yeah. So all the women just watched him walk by, you know. <laughs> I was the guy that had to, you know, grow the hair and, and play guitar for mm-hmm. that to happen. Yeah. So with all those mindsets, it, it's just like yeah, I, just reprogramming, you know. And um, it, it's, I think the most important thing is, is to know that I'm, I'm okay, man. Good. And I'm okay with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the big one. I, I really am because if you're not, that's cool. Then I, you know what? I can remove myself, mm-hmm. and I have to do that. I can't force anybody to love me, no. like me, or anything. And I think that's what I was big time guilty of in the past, because I I didn't have anything. Yeah, looking for looking for you know affirmation that you're you're cool, you're someone that people want to be with, yeah, be or around. around or whatever. Yeah, and. Um, it's i mean obviously everybody wants that that self uh um i don't want to say satisfaction but that self uh, but we want to feel you know wanted everybody wants to be yeah. wanted we all want to be wanted we want you to i want you to like me yeah but I'm, i can't force that mm-hmm. you know so it's like i i think especially with addicts and people that suffer from addiction we, we just want to be wanted mm-hmm. we want to know that we're wanted but we have to know that and want that it starts with us first. Yeah. It has to because if I if I can't be okay with me, how can I be okay for you mm-hmm. or anybody else for that matter? Yeah, you know. And uh, the the cool thing is that I, I was telling Haley this um, when I you know got back in contact with him and, and was like, man, I want to play with you again because I felt I screwed that up. Yeah. Because when we were trying to do the band thing at when we were at Guitar Center and then after he left and. You know, I went over there and I was always going over there, but I was messed up, man. And mm-hmm. We wrote some great songs and uh, I even practiced with the band a few times, but I could not be a good musician for him. And that broke my heart. Yeah, because you know? like you just said, that's what that was your end. In. That's and what you were good sudden, at. I couldn't. Uh. And then like the last what six months um, before I got into recovery, I hung, my guitars were in the case. Yeah. I smashed up my, my ovation mm-hmm. and I just, I didn't care. And for me, that, that was like, to me, when I look back at it, that was the, the, the thing, the cutoff. And if I had that sense of awareness and clarity, I would have realized it. wait, that's, you know, that's who I am. And mm-hmm. I'm throwing it away just so I can wallow in what, whatever the case may be. So, um, you know, it, it's like, and now especially playing now, um, getting out with Haley and playing acoustically on Monday nights with him. It's, 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 it's like, awesome to see. Cause you're a shredder. I mean, you're, you're Iron Maiden shirt, like <laughs> finger tapping. Yeah. Like, yeah. All that. And to me, that's like getting back to the basics. Yeah. Learning something stripped down. Exactly. The pure rawness. And with Haley, it's just, you know, when, when I say I'm grateful and thankful for the people in my life, mm-hmm. it's apparent. Because Haley could have said, dude, are you kidding me? I don't want to play with you and whatnot. And and another cool thing, like with Haley, when I apologized to him and everything, he goes, dude, you know, I love you. I, I love you, Daddy D. How Haley would Daddy, say that. Yeah. And I was just like, to me, that's uh, that's unconditional, man. Mm-hmm. That's, that's when people see something in you that you never thought that you could see in yourself. And not in a in an arrogant or... or uh, holier than thou way just yeah. in a positive just dude you, you're okay man i loved you then and i love you now now let's get to playing yes you know and it's not like one of those things to where we've never even rehearsed it's like <laughs> songs that we know i mean a few things we played in the past but it's just like okay this is what we're going to do and, da, 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 da. and it's just like it's so good for me for my soul mm-hmm. i mean yeah i'm always going to have the, the, that thought of grandeur that i'm going to be in a big band and, and be successful. Of course, I'm, I'm always gonna want that. But here's the, here's the realist and, and the beautiful thing. If I don't have that, I'm still gonna play every day for myself and that's yeah. okay. Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm less than or not successful, um, you know, because I'm alive. Well, and, that, and that's the key, like you said, you're changing your perspective. Because before it was like, if I don't make it, I'm nothing, yeah. you know? And now you're just like, no. Yeah, because I've been in a few bands to where we could have made it. Yeah. 
And whatever the case was, you know, um, it just wasn't meant to be. So, you know, there's certain things when I look back at it now to where it's like, it's, things happened the way they were supposed to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they got you to here. Exactly. And you're helping a lot of other people right yes, now. Yes, I, I would like to, yes. Yeah, so anybody listening to this that maybe is battling their own addictions, is it mainly narcotics then that, that you guys deal with just because it's Narcotics um, Anonymous? Well, or? okay, so Narcotics Anonymous is all-encompassing, which means that alcohol and drugs. Yeah. Okay, so narcotics, I mean, uh, alcohol is a drug, period. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Co coffee's a drug. Yeah. Yeah. It, Mm, God, I love coffee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I still have my vices, uh, the coffee and the cigarettes, I know. but you ha oh, Hey, 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 hey. you're going to pick. <laughs> yeah, you can slow, pick some? Slow, slow, slowly, yeah. baby steps. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and so those are the things that obviously ruin a lot of people's lives. Mm -hmm. And we see it every day on TV. I mean, that yeah. fentanyl bullshit, are you kidding me? That dude? and wrong way drivers? <laughs> that could be, yeah. But, I mean, the fentanyl thing, I'm just like, oh my God, that's like a, like another level of like, oh, here comes this. Yeah. Um, because I was hooked on fentanyl patches. Oh shit. Um, back in, uh, what? 2004. I was with this girl for a while and she had them for medical reasons. Uh huh. And she was like, well, you should try this. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> okay. And all of a sudden I've got patches all over myself, oh, you know, shit. and you know, I'm just like, oh my god. I mean, she she was a big uh, f a pharmaceutical user, uh -huh. um, and I think that's what got me into that kind of line of drugs. Oh, uh, okay. But okay. when I did kick that, um, that was probably the hardest thing I've ever kicked as far as drug wise, Ooh. and it didn't kill me. Now the fentanyl that's out there now, I mean, that's they're putting it in heroin, speed, and all this stuff, and it's killing people like that. Shh. Shit. That's crazy ass shit. So, you know, um, to be able to, for somebody to walk away with that and just to at least get to like a meeting or, or a program or whatever, um, if they get it, they get it. Yeah. But nobody's going to um, quit until they're ready. Yeah. What does, what does fentanyl attack? I guess what does it, is it basically just stop your heart or All, does it it's, it's bodily a functions? It's a major painkiller. So it's for pain. Yeah. So your nervous system straight up. So if you mix that with a downer like heroin, that's a big uh -huh, thing, I guess. Yeah. And you put that in there. Yeah. Your whole shutdown. You done. bring it to a stop. It's just, yeah. you slow it down enough. And then next thing you know, lights are off. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, a, a lot of heroin, like if you did too much heroin, that's kind of what it would do. But yeah. you put, I, I guess now just that little bit of fentanyl and shit done. And that's scary because a lot of heroin users or anything like that, that are used to just doing their heroin, whatever. Um, now all of a sudden it's with fentanyl, man, it's, you don't even know anymore. But what is it? Is it, is it, is it that the high is so good? So euphoric um, or, you know, as far as how it is now, I mean, I never did it like that when I did it, it was just in a, in a 50 milligram or 75 or a hundred milligram patch. Okay. And all it did, it was time released into your body. And yeah. at that time it was like, if you had back pain, yeah. um, uh, a lot of, uh, rheumatoid arthritis people oh, okay. back yeah, yeah. then did it. And this was before there was like an opioid epidemic. Um, uh -huh. and so now everybody knows about uh, Oxycontin all of a sudden there's yeah. that, you know, everybody's, you know, addicted to that. Mm -hmm, well mm -hmm. now, okay, well let's throw fentanyl in there. Now, it, you know, it's just those different, uh, evolutions. Yeah. Well, basically. people are, s are chasing that next high, the bigger high, but at the same time, it's like, if you're in serious pain and you go to the doctor and they're like, Hey, just, just alternate ibuprofen and Tylenol. They're like, who's this fucking idiot? Mm -hmm. I'm in some serious pain. I need right. some hard shit. Like right. I'm dealing with some mm -hmm. shit. And that's where yeah. an addict, like an addict can start. Yeah, because, for sure. Um, I've, I've met a few gentlemen or, or, and even a lot of women too, to where, well, I had back pain, then I had this back surgery, you know, and they never did drugs ever before, yeah. like on that level. Now all of a sudden they're getting <clears throat> painkillers, whether it's um, uh, codeine or Oxycontin or, or Percocets. 
and also a doctor, an authority figure that is an educator to, in a sense, like is, is prescribing this to you. So yeah. it must be good for me. And doctor says, yeah, doctor says this, right. That's, that's a big, that's a big one. And they didn't realize that when they were addicted or, or prescribing these things that you could get addicted to it because you are getting high and it is a high narcotic, you know, yeah. uh, uh, pharmaceutical thing, which it does help, but your your body builds up a tolerance to whatever you're doing then you've mm -hmm. got to have more it adapts yeah, yeah yeah and so it's just like oh my god just it's crazy dude how all that shit works but uh you know when i uh when i went and uh so when i got help and so i went to the scottsdale behavioral place and they told me that well for one thing you're a manic depressive another thing is that um and what did they say manic depressive and um a, a lot of depression and obviously you are because of drugs and alcohol mm -hmm. so they got me on this uh uh um, antidepressant which was okay at first because that got me out of my thing and got me going um but uh everything has to be non-narcotic if i ever you know go to the doctor that's true or, right oh i didn't even think be. about that has to be for me um and i'm not saying i was ever well, yeah, I did do pills. So no matter what kind of drug, if it's going to get me high, I'm pretty much going to like it. So you wouldn't even do medical marijuana at this point? Um, okay, so here's going to be the messed up thing about that. Yeah. I feel, and I've seen a lot, I don't have a problem with marijuana or medical marijuana. Now, for me to do it, for this addict, I can't. I got you. Yeah, that's what I'm you getting know, at. Yeah, so. yeah. For me, I know. Uh, what about like CBD, the um, non-psychoactive? Um, if it's, uh, if I had to, like if I had whatever would. Because uh, 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 they, they would normally prescribe it, you know, if, if you're having pain, you know, right. maybe have this, the CBD. Well, it, it that even depends on something like that because it, it's still a. Uh, for medical purposes and whatnot. And, and to me, I, I think that's one of the best things that ever come along. Yeah. But I know for me, it's that, okay. So when I went and had my colonoscopy, yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah. That three, was, three fingers or yeah, oh, dude, no. just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. So when I went and had that, you know, I, I told the, uh, the nurse that I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm a recovering addict. Yeah. Um, so I just, you know, I, I don't want anything, you know, and, and here's the cool thing. When you tell people like that, that nurse was like, oh, how many years you got? Yeah. Like, uh, well, at that time, I was like, I was coming up on two years. And she goes, I've been clean for 15. I'm like, ah. Yeah. So she goes, so just so you know that what we put you out with is, uh, it's not like your typical whatever they put, put you out with. Yeah. And, and, and that's all I had. Because I was, I'm afraid about that. Because that's just me knowing that I don't want to go down that road. Yeah. You know, I don't even want to attempt it. Oh, I can handle that or what. No, I no. just don't want to do it, man. I just, yeah. Well, and if you can opt, opt out for sure, like I'm the same, like in the sense of like, I, not that I'm scared of being addicted to pain pills, but I just, you know, hear about them being inflammatory. Like if you have mm -hmm. ibuprofen regularly, like it's actually what it's, it's supposed to work as an anti-inflammatory, but right. it starts to kill all your gut bacteria mm -hmm. that is healthy. And then next thing you know, it's, it's creating all this extra inflammation, which is supposed to be curing. So like, I cannot tell you the last time I took a pain pill and not that I've had anything serious. Like I haven't, I don't really get headaches. Um, I've, I probably had two headaches that I've dealt with in like the past two and a half years. But, and yeah. I, I've, so That's I want to awesome. say it's been at least like three years since I've taken any sort of pain pill. Um, I rarely get sick. So if I do do anything, it's usually allergies and I'm usually just, you know, Dayquil, Nyquil, right, Dayquil, yeah. Nyquil. Like that's, that's it. So like, I'm just like, no, I don't want any of that. Like, um, I had issues with my ankles. Like they were in pain. I was in pain all the time because I was playing sports so, yeah, and I, yeah. I had to strap up. Um, and, um, 
I go, I go to get, you know, I'm like, Hey, I, I want to request an MRI. And she's like, well, you know, why do you want an MRI? I was like, well, my ankles are messed up. She's like, well, okay. Are you taking any pain pills? I'm like, no, like, well, insurance wants to see that you're taking, you know, you're doing what you can. I was like, what do you what mean? You mean? Exactly. This is me coming oh. here, trying to do what I can. Right. Like me taking pills is just masking the, the yeah. symptoms. Like I'm trying to get to the root cause. So she's like, well, I'm going to prescribe you this because they want to see it. And I'm like, I'm not going to pick them up. She's like, well, I'm just going to put it in your file so they see that you're doing what you can, which I'm like, that's crazy. I'm like, that's crazy. Like, no, I don't want to do it. Uh So like, uh, luckily, you know, the MRI went through, I got, I got that. And, um, you know, I've gone through this procedure. So I, I've dropped like, like two, like two grand to $2,500 on like either physical therapy, the MRI, cus- I'm in custom orthotics right now. Like, oh, cause I, the way I viewed it was like, listen, I, I still want to be active <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and I stand 95% of my work day. Exactly. So I'm just like, let me make this investment up front. So it doesn't become a greater issue down the road where I have no choice. And now it's may, maybe I'll, I will have to take pain pills at that point. Well, I, I, okay. So this, this much I do know is that they are coming up with non-narcotic ways. So I, I, uh, I pinched my sciatic nerve about what, four months ago from work. And I'm like, and I woke up one day and I'm like, holy shit, no. I, after everything I put in my body, now this is, you know, and I'm like, God, <laughs> what do I got to do, right? And um, so I went to the ER and I told the doctor, I go, look, man, I, I think, you know, I wasn't sure I, because it was like right here. And, um, you know, I go, look, I, I don't want any, I don't want any drugs. But yeah. it's just something, and he gave me a, a shot in my butt. I think it was just a cortisone or something. Okay, yeah, Something, yeah. just a non-narcotic shot. And uh, he goes, well, do you take anything? I go, well, every, I, I do get headaches, and I take a leave. Uh-huh. So that's, that's it. Yeah. He goes, well, then here's what you need to do. We're going to give you that shot. You need to um, rest your back and, um, and just move and, and kind of be aware of how your body is. You yeah. Know? And before, you know, I, I'm surprised. And here's another thing. Here I am, 53 years old. After all the drugs and alcohol and everything I put into my body, I, I'm still doing pretty much okay. You yeah. Know? yeah. And so I'm just like, holy crap, man. So there's a lot of things that make me go, okay. You know, the, this last part of my life that I, however long I live, man, it's got to be right somehow. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I've learned a few things, you know. Um, just to be aware because I'm on my feet too yeah, you know, all yeah, day yeah. long and I like my job it's physical and, and stuff like that and um, and I want to be that and I've seen people that are way half my age that, have, <laughs> that can't do yeah. anything and so I'm like whoa and well, you're almost you're, you've, you got like you say you got to be thankful of you know how you've come out because you well, know they probably didn't go as hard as you did uh, no, and and here I am able to still keep on doing what I'm doing, yeah. and um, still have a little bit of you know sense about me. But you you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's those things that I'm just like, damn. Okay. Did yeah. you ever um, do like LSD and mushrooms? Yes. I wasn't ever much of a tripper, but I yeah. did it um, when I was on Catalina Island. I remember. Uh, uh, we somebody brought over shrooms and i wasn't ever much of a tripper but it was like i figured shrooms was okay yeah and i remember I ate some caps and uh there was this girl and we sat on the beach all day mm-hmm. got sunburnt like a, just crazy but we <laughs> laughed and oh it was great <clears throat> and then uh one time <clears throat> when i was living in colorado i always thought that <clears throat> excuse me mm-hmm. i always thought that up acid and all that stuff wasn't really my gig because mm-hmm. i i just always you know and 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 i hope nobody else gets offended but uh, grateful deadheads yeah know? yeah <laughs> i love grateful dead i got all the respect for them in the world but i've been to a dead show and it was just the most yeah i was not uh, yeah and i just did because i was trying to hook up with this chick and it was all bad. of course we do the worst things for girls yeah right <laughs> but uh so when i lived in colorado um a friend of another friend something happened and all of a sudden i've got like this this piece of uh, uh blotted lsd there were 20 tabs of lsd oh, on shit. it 20 yeah 
and I'm like, okay. And so I remember my, the drummer in my band at that time, um, Tony Singer, um, him and I, we did these for like two weeks straight. Yeah. Every day. Every day. Every day. It was crazy, right? And we were really big potheads. And, and so, I mean, and there was cocaine around at that time. But, <laughs> you know, it, but I remember like, you know, and they, they look like little, like those uh, 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 spongy tabs that you put underneath like a, a coaster or something. Oh, like that, yeah, that. yeah. And I remember for like two weeks, we were tripping every day and that's crazy because i've heard that um lsd the effects are less and less if you do them consecutively like it yeah it it shuts off like the so did you have to like do more of a bigger dose yeah because at first it was like uh i remember we each did like one and then we were like up all night and i remember the the biggest thing that i remember is that everything um, felt like it was going mm-hmm. and it was all warm and, and things were uh, I, I don't want to feel like that but it just seemed like everything was just kind of had that, that fuzzy outside yeah. to it um, and, uh, and the, like uh, uh, the beginning of uh, Welcome to the Machine by uh, Pink Floyd uh-huh. the very beginning where you heard that yeah. I felt like that's how everything was like for two weeks <laughs> and but yeah like we had to do like two and uh i remember we and during that whole two weeks um we yet yeah, you took little power naps and you wouldn't know if it would be 20 minutes or a day yeah and i remember it was like oh what day is it oh screw it let's do it. and so we did another couple of doses and then smoked some weed and then we we would rehearse and I remember at that time we had this Tascam, little Tascam freaking four track. And um, we had, you remember when you could buy cassette tapes like in a, in a bundle of 10 mm-hmm. or something? Yeah. I remember we went through all 10 of them. And I think maybe out of all 10 of those cassettes, and there, there were what, 60 minute cassettes, there was like maybe one song on there. <laughs> and the rest of it sounded like yeah, a deadhead yeah, show. Da, da, da. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> dude. Oh my God. <laughs> Fucking stupid. But, uh, yeah, I just I was never much of a tripper. I I was never really looking for. That. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I definitely want to get into it. Um, just because I I hear so many good things about um people using them properly. Yeah, sure. I think yeah. if anything is done right, especially when it comes to like medical marijuana, there's yeah. a purpose for that. Um, and for so many people with those other. Uh, medical ailments or whatever there's use for that yeah um there is and and like uh with any of the pharmacy stuff if it's used right well damn it it's used for all the the pills that people are hooked onto it's just that they abuse it because a lot of us are addicts man, yeah man. that don't want to you know and when i say addicts addictive personality yeah addictive and- um um things i mean you know it's just like whether it's with food or whatever. food exactly what i was gonna say i was not to pick on you know you know fat people because i was i was overweight you know i'm, I'm still considered overweight but please uh, dude, yeah please. no i'm still considered overweight Get out. but well that's the thing it's like like we just over consume like food yes. you can get you're you're addicted to food sure and that's just the nature of of who we as people evolved to become because we, we didn't. I mean, how how long has it been since we've had this, like, industry of like food and manufacturing? Like, what, a hundred and fifty years? Like, a hundred and ninety yeah. years? Like, it's it's in that amount of time. Like, our productivity has just skyrocketed, mm-hmm. and so you can get that quick fix. You know, oh God, yeah. that 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 sugar, the you know, extra mm-hmm. meat, all that other stuff you that your body craves. Get yeah. it right here, right yeah. now. Yeah, you don't even have to leave the house, man. I know, just, you know, you do it yeah. exactly, and that's crazy to me too. It is. It is because to me the whole, and I guess that's when it's like, oh well, I'm an old school addicted person now yeah. because the whole thing was like going out to eat. Now yeah. you can have your favorite food that you go out to, just yeah. brought to your house. You don't it's have like, to leave the house and interact with anybody. Convenience. Yeah. So right there, that's that's just feeling. You know, not everybody has an addictive personality, but that's feeling the people that do. 
And that's how it can create no matter if yeah. it's with that, with drugs or anything like that. Well, I would say it's and an addictive. And shopping too. Dude. Shopping, yeah. Big well, time. that's just the, I mean, you know, shopping is just like going out on a hunt or harvesting your, your crop and your, you see, you know, the fruits of your labor. Like you see like that, that's what I would equate to shopping to, sure. you know, and then we overeat because your body doesn't know when the next time it's going to get this food. So it's like, Hey, we need more of this. This is, this sugar is really good energy. Like it's really good yep. to just turn around and go. But when we sit down and just watch, you know, Netflix or play video games or, you know, you sit, you know, in a cubicle all day, like your body doesn't know like that. Hey, you know, <laughs> we're just sitting here, you know, it's just going to be like, okay, well, let's just store this, you know, sugar and fat yeah, until we need it. Yeah. And it never needs it. <laughs> it's crazy. And the thing that I, I know I found out with myself, I've always been a guy who, a sweet dude. I, I love sweets. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a chocoholic. I love chocolate. And um, I have found that when um, I'm trying to cut back on my sugar intake because yeah. I know how it affects me. You know, it's like Dr. Pepper, man. I could drink Dr. Pepper all day. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I also know that, especially with when I work, like if I, uh, if I've had too much and then on my lunch time, I need to take a 20, 20 minute, you know, power nap. Yeah. And I've learned to do that. But then after that, I'm ready to go again, but mm -hmm. I got to drink either, a, you know, Starbucks or something like that to get that going. So I'm, I'm been trying to, uh, uh, take more vitamins, um, Good. and just, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm over 50 now. So, I mean, I, I'm aware of that. My body isn't that young. How I always thought it was just go, go, go. I don't need it. Yeah, no, I do. Yeah. Listen to your body. You're yeah. getting better at listening to your body. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely. what it is. Because, uh, you know, um, I still, I'll, I'll eat a whole fucking chocolate cake. And give oh, me, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I will too. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> but I also know not to eat the whole thing in one sitting you know? yeah. and it's funny because uh those are things that i love and just because you're okay you still need to be aware of yeah know, i'm trying stuff. to instill that in the kids right now because obviously you know they want candy oh, they God. want muffins well, all the time isn't that what all of us were grown up on mm -hmm. you know hey if you're good you can have a piece of candy well then we're good as a kid oh we get candy yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and all of our holidays are surrounded by candy mm -hmm. and halloween and oh my god yeah i love halloween so when you have when you have candy it kind of brings you back to like that you know the good feeling mm -hmm. of of when you experience that um but you i explained to the kids you know that you know i've showed them pictures of rotten teeth on google images i'm like this is what happens when you have too much of it and i said no candy is good it's delicious but right. if you have what happens if you have too much of it or well, stomach will hurt because they, they've they've experienced that to to a sure. small extent where yeah, it's like yeah. you know they had a little bit too much you know <laughs> once um right. and my son doesn't have that much of a sweet tooth he likes more like uh fruity candy <laughs> But my go. daughter, you know, likes more like the baked goods, like cookies and muffins oh. and, and all that. So like, you know, but she has gotten to the point where like we get these little muffins, you, you know, that she'll have like, right, you know, maybe yeah. two or three times a week. And um, God, she, uh, yeah, awesome, she, she'll have, if she has more than two, she'll, she'll complain of a stomach ache. And so we know, I'm like, we have told you, I was like, so, Hey, what happens wow. when you have too many? She's like, I get a stomach ache. So oh, she'll, you know, man. so if I give her, if I accidentally give her more than two, she'll be like, Hey, like, I don't want this other one because my stomach will hurt. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's good. I was like, yeah, I said, this God, is good. Awesome. This is good every now and then as a treat. I was like, you know, muffins is not food. It's a treat, <laughs> it. you know? <laughs> right. And, uh, but she's horrible, man. She's like, if it ain't, if it ain't brown or fried, <laughs> or chicken like she don't want it but my, my son is a little tank like he'll eat just about anything yeah, so i'm like awesome. yes yes keep that up <laughs> and vegetables is that, and here's another thing that i've learned is that before i mean i always like to cook but even more so now it's like you know my, my favorite thing is to make pasta Ooh. with a, a chicken yeah and then broccoli and cauliflower yeah and then i'll steam it and then i'll saute it up and add it with the pasta and then the chicken and all that i'm just like why could i because even though i can't taste here's the thing yeah here's the right. crazy forgot thing. about that yeah but it, there's that sense in that i don't know if it's muscle memory but it's like 
I, I know what kind of seasoning I like before. Yeah. And yeah. stuff. So I, it's, it's weird when I tell people well, I can sense it. Yes, because your tongue would still react to yes. it. The sensors there would still mm-hmm. react. Like, like you say, you feel it when it's spicy. You know, you kind of feel that yeah. sense. You just don't taste it. Exactly. So, yeah, no, that makes total sense. Yeah. But, and, and also you've tasted it for the past 50 years. So, you you know, your mind <laughs> yeah. kind of still remembers. Because yeah, yeah. how long has it been since you haven't been able to um, smell or uh, taste? Well, uh, three years. The three now. years. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? L- a little Dude. over three years. So I can kind of imagine that maybe in like the next, you know, five years you might be forget. I would say you might well, forget. Well, you know, um, when I... When I had, uh, when I was going to see my doctor like once a month, just, you know, for checkups and making sure I was okay, my body was all right. You know, I would ask her, I'd go, well, what can I do? She's like, well, here's the thing. We would have to do a surgery and see how bad that fracture is. And if that is something, because it's part of your, uh, your nerve or sense. Yeah. So if that's detached, there's no guarantee to put it back. Jeez. you know or anything like that so that is here, wild to I, me. I know right and so here has been my whole mind set of that because it, it's not like something that i'm just like oh man you know it's like no that, that's what happened because of my um using and all that through my life that is what happened but for that to happen that got me to where i am now yeah so i'm okay with it and, um, you know, she even said, well, it may come back someday. Yeah. But there's also a story that um, I found out. Michael Hutchinson, the lead singer from In Excess, uh-huh. that happened to him. Really? And it sent him over the edge. And I don't know if that's what led up to his suicide or his death. Yeah. But that put him um, right under. Well, yeah. I mean, that, that you've you've lost two of your greatest senses yeah but i think i've gained so much more because of it yeah for me yeah for sure and that's that's you changing your perspective damn it god it's fucking amazing i know right it's it's, you know when i look at it like that i'm just like you know fucking life is fucking awesome so uh, to get back to like narcotics anonymous Uh, and in the program you're involved in like what are some places that people could research or where could they find you know you know if they wanted to maybe lean on you or people like you like okay. what what should they google or um they, okay so if you google narcotics anonymous especially here in in uh, arizona or any state for that matter you put in narcotics anonymous and wherever you are at you will get a, a the, the your front website page and um you can uh uh um, get meetings and everything you anything on the computer having to do with that you can go to meetings and so the meeting that i chair every friday night is here in apache junction at the epiphany church uh-huh. every friday at eight o'clock oh wow okay. and um you know and uh if you go to a meeting they always have pamphlets of meeting list of the whole valley i mean i've got meeting lists of everything in the valley but that information is also online just on the website yeah. And there's also other uh, different kind of 12-step programs. There's uh, Cocaine Anonymous. Mm-hmm. There's Crystal Meth Anonymous. And obviously, the one that started it all, Alcoholics Anonymous. Yeah, yeah. And AA. They call that AA. And then there's Narcotics Anonymous. So um, different meetings help different people with whatever. Um, for me, even though... Um, Is there a White Claw Anonymous yet? <laughs> Just <mess it. laughs> that's you know, the next one yeah right i mean you know and here's here's another thing that i've also uh thought about is that even if you are not an addict there are things that are in um the program saying and whatnot that are just there to be a better human they're being. universal yeah. yeah you know um I'm not much of a religious person, but I'm very spiritual. Yeah. A big difference. Yes. And there's a, uh, 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 the serenity prayer that I firmly believe in. Mm-hmm. God grant me the, uh, oh shit. grant me the courage, uh, to accept the things I cannot change. Mm-hmm. God grant. I can't even remember it right. Oh man. Oh, You're on the yeah. spot. It's all right. Yeah. 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 Anyway. So the serenity prayer, <laughs> um, is it says everything to me except the things you can the 
courage to change the things you can and the wisdom to know the difference. Yeah, that's a good saying, yes. And, and to me, you don't have to be an addict or anything like that. Just It's just good human. It's almost like a, a owner's manual for me. Yeah. Whether or not. And I think everybody could take away something positive out of it. Yeah. Because we all need a little something. Could you imagine if we, if we as humans came with an owner's manual? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is how you need to be a good person. Yeah. This is and this is basically what our parents or whoever, however we're brought up, that's our owner's manual and whatnot. So, you know, it, it's no matter what's going on in your life or what your your uh, um, character defects are, because everybody has them. We're humans. Yes, for sure. But they can help you get over it, no matter what. You know, um, and for me, it's just it's it saved my life man it's hands down because i i wouldn't if it wasn't for um you know narcotics anonymous for me i don't know if i'd still be sitting here yeah you know i know i wanted to and i knew i i knew at that point in time when i got out of the hospital and went to the behavioral health place i needed something Mm -hmm. and this was something that i felt for me that i could it felt right. It just felt right. And I knew it felt right. Good. Um, you know, and, and there's tons of other programs out there and, and self-help things yeah. for different kinds of people. And that's great. There should be all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, find what's right for them. Exactly. Most definitely. Like when, when you know, because, again, I've been on, on the health kick. So it's like, mm-hmm. oh, this diet works. This diet works for me. This diet works for me. It's like same perfect. Con- same concept. Yeah. I say yeah. like, uh, the best diet is the one you can stick to. Exactly. And something that you know that it makes you feel right about yourself, no matter what it is. Yep. Um, the biggest thing I, I, I tell um, the people at the meetings is like, you know, just because you can't do the drugs and alcohol anymore doesn't mean mm-hmm. the other people can. Yeah. Because some people can use it, quote unquote, responsibly, but sure. maybe they just also don't take it to that abusive exactly. point And with, with anything. And it, it comes to that, that. Um, you know, not not trying to judge them no, for uh-uh. for what they're doing because that, a lot of addicts get into <coughs> excuse me get into that the preaching because oh man and that bugs me because it no matter when you're trying to tell somebody if they don't do that do whatever it is it's wrong you can't do that hey, you're just you're turning you're, you're giving them more ammo or another reason to stay away yeah and you can't do that yeah. and um it's, that's a fine line to walk it, it is a fine line that's why whenever I, I share my story um at the meetings or tell anybody it's like you know this is what i'm doing and this is how this is for me you know and i don't want to say every addict has the same thing but there's a lot of, you know, pretty good facts that we're all kind of the same in, you know, different scenarios or whatever. Yeah. And um, it's worked for millions of people. So there's that aspect. But I know for me, um, this is what's working. And, and if you get something out of it that's going to help you, then stick with it. Yeah. No what it is. But there comes a time with whatever is going on. If you need to change, something's going to tell you to change. And usually it's some life uh life uh altering thing yeah. and for me it was almost death life changing and epiphany that was yeah funny. yeah you know and and thank thank god or, or whatever that oh and i do know that there is something bigger than me and and they call that a higher power mm-hmm. um and some people obviously go to religion and that's great you know i'm not saying uh anything bad about religion or anything i just know for me for me is that I'm a spiritual guy. And there's one thing that was said to me, even in my hardcore using days, that always stuck with me, is that religion is man-made, spirituality is God-given. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, because I'm I'm an atheist in the sense of I don't I don't say that there is no God. Yeah, I just say I don't know if there is. I I don't accept any evidence saying that there is. So I just I just carry on. And just try to be a good, as good of a person as I can. Mm-hmm. And, but I would say that I'm spiritual. Yes. Like I, I believe in the soul and all yes. that. Like there's something more to us. Like yes. we can't explain. Exactly. Um, it's very unexplainable, but it's but you very, can't say, 
Yeah. But it's there. Yeah. And you can't say it's the thing. You can't say like, <coughs> oh, I'm spiritual without being like, oh, where well, you're like, you know, this religious nut. Or are you spiritual in the sense of like, I'm spiritual, like Sedona type, you know, mm-hmm. shit, you know? Oh. And and that's all with, I, I mean, there, I, I know there's something bigger than it. And, and that's, especially in the program, they say you have to have a higher power that is unconditionally loving and caring yeah. to your understanding, whatever it is. You know, I mean, they've even gone. If you believe in that doorknob is saving your life, that's it. Good. You know, did something more than you. Yeah. Um, and for me, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that music has saved my life. When I'm aware of my love for it, and there's something about it that's bigger than me. Yeah. You know, because that's where it is. If you have something that's bigger than you, that you know is you and that's that's just what gives you the motivation to to carry on yeah you know is there a song that you turn to there's so many songs dude i I was talking with uh uh, my girl uh jojo about music and whatnot and um she asked me what um what what would be your perfect band if you were in it or something like that and i'd go you know the hard and heaviness of Pantera. Yeah. The the guitar wizardry. And of, I mean, I've got so many guitars, but for me, obviously, Eddie Van Halen got me to, you know, and then the soulful and then, then that heartfeltness of Journey. Yeah. And heart, the band heart. And those were like, you know, how can you go from Pantera to Journey to heart? And then everything in between, it's just like, that's what music is yeah. for me. Yeah. You know, and as far as songs, it's... It, it's, dude, there's millions of them. Tons. Is there one that you like play though? Um, I've been uh, kind of going on. What's going as on? It's a coffee maker. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. Maybe. Um, there was uh, especially now. You know, there's certain songs that have been touching me and making me go. And uh, there's that Fleetwood Mac song, um, yeah. Landslide. And um, that's why I got the capo when I was there. And so I've been just messing around, you know, with those kind of su- subtlety, that kind of flowy. Because it, it, to me, that's, you know, as, as much as I love to just... Yeah. There's something about to bring that in and then to have that, that just beautiful... Same. Voice. Brother, you got to get on um, Lost Dog Street Band. You got to listen to... They're, they're a country duo. Mm-hmm. Um but he's he's definitely you can see it in his eyes and um in his lyrics his lyrics just kill me man and nice. you can see his recovery i mean he has a song on his solo album called using again um which is just a fucking killer but like like uh, their tracks are just awesome but i'll be uh, you know i'll be listening to that regularly i have that cd on repeat mm. in my truck and then i'll be like oh, okay let me pull out my ipod and you know throw on some skrillex or some yeah freaking, exactly you know grammatic you know some uh-huh. some house electronic music producers and it's just like how can you you know jump between the two and it's like i love music dude. It, yeah it fills your soul yeah um it, speaking of that like your original stuff so Haley um, has all these original songs, and uh, even when I was using them really bad, we were able to come up with a lot of cool stuff. So last night when we were playing um, at the Old Town Tavern in Scottsdale, yeah, uh, <laughs> every every or every other Monday. Well, we we played last night, and then not this coming up, but the twenty third we're playing there again. The twenty third at eight. At eight to eleven. Eight, eight to 11. eleven. Yeah, um, but uh, you know. Haley is, he's got this way with lyrics. And last night we were, there were people that will play some more original stuff. And the cool thing about that is that, you know, it, I, I can just follow Haley. It, it's almost like he's like my kindred musical brother in a way, if that makes sense on, on a totally different level, as opposed to like when I had my metal bands, I don't think I've ever had that kinship with another musician, the way I have it with Haley. Yeah, and I played with a lot of people in my time, and there's I've been in really good bands, but there's never been that, you know. He doesn't even have to look at me. I mean, there are a few times where I have to, okay, where where you at? But even <laughs> with the covers and even with the uh, originals, man, it's just that feeling, and um, you know, it was so cool playing the original stuff last night, and uh, yeah, it's always nice when you can do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and it's, there's just something about it. 
and the way his songs are, I wish I was a better lyricist because I, I can come up with music and I can come up with a title of how that piece of music's making me feel. Yeah. But as far as to be a really good lyricist, I mean, oh, it's like it's a gift. Are red, violets are blue. <laughs> <laughs> I dig you. Yeah, you do. You know, I mean, that's <laughs> my, you know. But, um, Dare but enjoy it, the poet uh, oh, of yeah. our generation. <laughs> yeah, I'm both don't know, know how to show it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking stupid. But, uh, you know, it's, but musically, it's like, you know, it's like I always have a feel of like, um, especially now because of, of how my emotions are running and how yeah. I'm aware of them. I have all these feelings and it's like, oh, man. So I think I want to call this piece of music. Sorry, not sorry. Then there's another one. Will you remember me and all these other pieces of music? That's just like, ah, oh, yeah. yeah, I get these to somebody who can sing them and then write out their music. So, yeah, yeah beautiful. Um, cool story, bro. Have you tried DMT? DMT. <laughs> That's a line from uh, people make fun of Rogan's podcast because oh, he, really? he always says like, "Have you ever tried DMT?" What's DMT? Um, uh, you not know what DMT is? No, I don't. Ooh. Yeah, um, dimethyltryptamine. I don't do something like that. DMT. Anyways, it's basically like. Um, the, the thing in, um, I think magic mushrooms or I think you, you can get it from frogs. I th oh. Um, you can get it from certain plants. Like it's, it's natural and, like and it's created. Psilocybin? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. That's what psilocybin okay. mushrooms. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that, but it's just like the basic, like the really potent stuff. Oh, shit. And, um, Mescaline yeah, it's like, it's like, like that. when you're talking about like life changing events, like from what i hear from from people that have tried to use it the right way like that has just been revolutionary for them but i was watching chelsea handler the other oh i think she yeah she yeah, was talking about that and they had to go to peru yeah that's that's um es Escal mm -hmm. oh. oh i just had it right before you oh, had, oh, right I'm before sex yeah. i knew that's where you were going to go with it I ayahuasca ayahuasca yeah, yeah yeah same thing and uh to me that's that's like that's amazing. See, but to, could you imagine doing that every day? Oh, no, no, you can't do it can't. every day. No, 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 no. That's what they say. It's like it's maybe once every two to five years that people will do it. Because yeah. it's so, well, the thing about ayahuasca, it's it's a whole ceremony. It's led by somebody. Yeah, and a shaman. Or yeah, something. the shaman. And um, you actually purge. Like you end up throwing up. Like your body just doesn't want that in itself and okay. and so that's all part of the ceremony it's a part of the ritual so it's not you're not just getting the high to get high right you you have to have that purging of your old self right. and and that leads to people to have some epiphanies and and you know reanalyze their their life right to me that that's amazing and and see also i i think on on a uh, on a chemical and drug level that's what's so attractive about that shit mm -hmm. Because in our society, you know, in our homeland, mm -hmm. you know, that's what's attractive about it because you're outside of yourself. Yeah. And at first it's like, oh, man, I, I remember when I smoked pot for the first time, I was like, oh, my God, this is, oh, <laughs> yeah. you know, and all these cool things are happening. And uh, or, or like the first time you do anything, it's like, oh, you're outside of yourself and all these cool things are happening. And you, that's why you keep on chasing that. You know, yeah, and and especially when, uh, you know, I I can say for me is that with the alcohol added with the speed, oh my god, <laughs> you could keep on doing both and doing everything. You know, whether you were up for days and and doing what most people do when they're on speed, um, but and then add an alcohol with it, and then oh my. It, Fucking crazy, dude. It, and, and that's what fucks with the mind, I think, because it's attractive. Yeah. What's not attractive about anything taking you out of your whole humdrum life? Well, it's everything. Watching TV, playing video yeah. games. like Because it's taking you out of that. Yeah. So anything like that is going to be attractive mm -hmm. to anybody. Yeah. It's, it's just how you... Watching sports. You know, mindset. watching... It's, 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 it's a little bit of a distraction from you know your unhappy mm -hmm. life or just you know it's entertainment for sure right. you know um yeah. you know and and when i think of that and and for me lately especially since i've been in recovery um we lost chris cornell and chester bennington yeah those are huge 
Yeah. Here are are, are and and Anthony Bourdain was another yeah, big one. Anthony yeah, Anthony Bourdain, correct. And um, you look at these people, and it's like, God, oh, what a great life they were. Mm-hmm. But something, something wasn't right. Yeah. You know, and and it's sad. It's sad because, you know, obviously they're you know. For me, as a musician, you look at people like them. It's like God. I would give anything to have that life. Or yes, yeah. you know. How could they? But <laughs> yep. you know, you don't know. It doesn't matter where you're at, because here's another. You know, I'm, I'm full of cliche sayings, um, but no matter where you go, there you are. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, you know, and it just really makes me think. It's like, well, God, what if I did have all the fame and fortune of the rock star life and would I be alive right now? Probably Maybe. not. You probably Maybe would not. have gone too hard. I, yeah, I mean statistically speaking, I, I shouldn't even be alive now. But, you know, it just makes me think man, there's some shit out there that people have to deal with, no matter what how big or small or how much money rich or poor, whatever. Yep. They, everybody has something that they gotta deal with. Yeah. And we've got to somehow um let people know that they can be all right, but we got to show them a, 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 another way. Yeah. Whether it's with drugs or just it, it, life in general, man. There's, there's got to be more out there to let people know that it, it, you can be okay, man. Whether yeah. you're homeless or you know, well, if I if I had the money and and is I, I kind of have this thought and yeah. um, is that I would love to somehow show a better society way now you know if i had the money what would you do well for one thing nobody would be hungry there, mm-hmm. and there would be no homeless now mind you there there's that 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 flip of the coin some people are homeless because they don't want to be responsible i yeah. get it yeah some people are homeless because they don't know how to be homebound Another thing is that, you know, all of our all of our vets coming back and, and not having any resource or anything like that. And I know society mm-hmm, is trying mm-hmm. to take care of that, which is but it needs yeah. to be more in the forefront. It really does. And and just helping people knowing that there's a choice and getting them into that realm and but if you know, if they make that choice to where like, no, I don't want to do that, well then you know what? Then you're gonna have to deal with how things are for you then. Mm-hmm. If we show them and get them some sort of clarity and know that there's a better way that it's possible, yeah. that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, no matter what, and that there is something better for them and show them the way and get them there and, and, and make it not, you know, not just say it. Actions speak louder than words. Yeah. Man. So it's like, to me, that that would be, oh, God, if I could somehow magic wand or whatever or come up with something because there's a lot of amazing people out there that are trying to do things like that when they're victim of circumstances the people in the bad spots a yeah. lot of times they are and, and uh e- even some of uh you know some people that are in uh you know uh, big spots that are trying to help people mm-hmm. find that mm-hmm. and i think if, if we as a society and as humans no matter where we were trying to get them to know that there's something better there it is but if you're not willing to go there then you know it's like you know you can't help somebody that doesn't want yeah to exactly you can't lead a horse you know yeah, to exactly. water and have a drink but i think there needs to be more uh, uh stuff like that in our society most definitely yeah it's and and people will look you know to like oh look how rich this person is or look at the wealth that this person has and the success of that and like they'll judge the nation you know the power of the nation or how good our nation is because of like these few people that have made it Mm -hmm. when there's millions of people in the gutter and that's the true measure of of Uh a society is is what you do to the least Mm -hmm. the the least important you know the, the people that don't feel like they don't are a factor like that is the measure the true measure of a nation a lot like i think uh mlk had said like you know the true the true measure in a man isn't you know how he behaves or how he holds himself when in in times of you know peace and, and prosperity it's 
it's how does he act yeah. when shit is yeah. at its worst? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and if you're struggling, if somebody else is struggling and you help that person that's struggling to me, that's, tr- you've got to, man. Yeah. Um, and, and it does something, you know, as hard as it may be, you know, um, that there was a, you know, uh, I was watching at, at work and, and it killed me. And for some reason I, I got all misty eyed. You know, when you see those uh, uh, animal commercials, mm-hmm. and the tortured animals, and yeah. all that, I'm just like, Are you? and here I am sitting at work, you know, just trying to eat my sandwich. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you know, and I know I've seen them before. Yeah. Or I'm just like, they've been on the TV. And I'm just like, but I really, for some reason at that point in time, it hit me. I'm just like, how? And then you hear it on the news. And then it's like all these other things started to come into my head. It's like, why can't we not do that? Why can't we as a society not do that? Yeah. You know, I mean, nobody's going to change the world overnight. And I get that. I'm not trying to, you know, but I tell you what, if there is something that I could possibly do, you know, and, and for me staying, not, not only for my own addiction, but staying in a program like this and helping people. Um, if I can help one person, not, you know, to me, that's like, mm-hmm. but it's not about, um, obviously when you help somebody, it makes you feel good. Yeah. But when you see the change in other people and, and it's just, you know, that's hope, man. That's, that's giving hope to something. Yeah. You know, and, and to me, I think that's what a lot of people don't have a lot of is, is hope. Yeah, and, and that and purpose. I have an idea to um, get some shirts printed out. Um, that <clears throat> it's um it's the the uh, like on a computer like the mm-hmm. keyboard it's it's control f so f- to find okay. and then purpose is in the sh- search bar because that's Ew. like like that's what causes a lot of depression is people feeling like they don't have purpose and then I think a lot of that falls with the people on the other side of the spectrum that have this false sense of entitlement to the people that aren't having a purpose. And I think there's, that's where some, a lot of things are divided because there are those people that think shit, you owe me everything. Oh yeah. 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 The people that dangle, you know, everything they've done for you over your head. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that false sense of entitlement, Mm -hmm. whether it be with, uh, you know, well, you got to work to earn what you got. No, I don't. I'm owed this or whatever. Uh, and there's a lot of different. And then the people that are like trying to find a purpose that feel just helpless and hopeless. And there's, there's got to, you know. We'll I, get there. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully <laughs> in our lifetime, you know, or something, you know, because there are some great things out there. And I tend to gravitate more towards, you know, um, the things that are good out there for people. Yeah. And I find myself, and maybe it's because maybe I am finally growing up. I, I don't know, you know? Yeah, 53 um, years young, finally growing yeah, up. Yeah, you know? the oldest young dude you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but there is something with that for me to carry on the rest of my life. Yeah. You know, there's got to be. You, where you are is where you're at. Is that what it was? Yeah. No matter yeah. where you go, there you are. Yeah, exactly. And you're able to hopefully pass along the wisdom that you've earned you know like like earned you know like blood sweat tears like yeah yeah you know yeah yeah, you've you've earned this and and all you could do now is is pass that along to somebody that it might help that's the greatest thing about it because there's another saying in the program is that you can't keep what you have unless you give it away Mm-hmm. And for a while there, that made me, well, why would I want to give away what I've got? Then I won't have it. No, that's not it. That's not how that works. Um, so it's, it's, if I can, you know, what I've been through can help somebody going through the same or not even the same or somehow relate to them. Man, that's golden, dude. Yeah. That, and, and, and if somebody's willing to, uh, you know, do what I've done to change. However, I got to do my thing. Dude, that to me, that's what it, it is. Yeah. Because if we've got to learn from each other. Yep. And if we can learn from each other, yeah. 
we can teach other people. Well, you just you just described my podcast in a sense. Uh-huh. Like I'm um, I'm here to learn from you, yeah. and in ho- hopes that it also helps yeah. somebody else. You know, and that, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, you know, it really is. And to me, that's man. Yeah, you know, finally, it's like I feel like why couldn't I at least understood all this before? And I think I did to a point. But I didn't have the clarity to... And it, it was the ugly truth. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like, you know, it's... Uh, I, I just, I look at life, especially now, man, it's, it's a beautiful thing to be a part of if you make it beautiful. Yeah. You want to be, and, and, you know, shit's going to happen. Life is going to happen regardless. But you got to go through it and, and just find, find the freaking yeah. puppy dog in it or whatever. Uh, you You're a beautiful soul, Darren. Yeah. Like, and, you know, nobody would fault you to, you know, be, you know, negative considering everything you've kind of gone through. And, uh, you, you've, it's amazing that, you know, you've, you've changed your pers- perspective on that. Um, can you play a couple songs? Can you play that Fleetwood song? Yeah. 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 yeah? Uh, let, let me grab the, uh, capo real quick. Yeah. I'm okay. gonna hit the head and then, okay. and then we can, All right. you just start playing whenever you're ready. All right. Cool. <laughs> time I, I, I play that it's like I'm, I'm thinking about Stevie Nicks yeah. and uh, her saucy ability yeah. <laughs> so uh, so like uh, like I was saying a lot of things that I've come up with that I've been kind of coming up with like uh, uh, titles and stuff like that so got a D2 love my D2 
go. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah. Thanks so, for that, man. Yeah, well, thank you for selling it to me. Because <laughs> I tell you what, you know, I mean, uh, I, I've had a lot of acoustics. And obviously when we were working at Guitar Center, I was like band at the tailor and I just knew yeah. that. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I got that thing right at the right time, right moment, you know, at this point in time in my life. And it's just really opened my my musicality. You yeah. Know? I mean, I trust me, I still play my electrics. I, I do all the shred stuff. Yep. But for me, it's just like that's opened up a whole new uh, uh, part of my, uh, I, I, I guess, my soul, mu- mu- bleh, musically speaking wise. And uh, it's just, you know, obviously I would love the whole world to hear it. But if not, man. I'm okay because it's like, you know, sometimes at night I'll be lying on my bed with my tailor just right there. And all of a sudden, oh, man, that sounds good. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And, and, and the cool thing about with a lot of the songs that I write and stuff like that, I can still retain them. <laughs> so I know, right? You know, and even with all the covers that I do with Haley or just that I know, mm-hmm. for some reason that stuff sticks in my head. Yeah. You know, and I'm just like, wow. You're, 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 you're meant for music exactly you know and it's like but god tell me something else is like what what oh i told you that and the funny thing is so my job now i'm working at home depot yeah um and i got promoted to a department supervisor perfect right congrats yeah you know so it's like all these cool things are happening and so um but man do i feel stupid and i don't (laughs) like that um (laughs) But, you know, that's how you learn. And, and I've really opened myself up to in, in a uh, part of uh, um, I've always been, you know, um, a build kind of guy. You know, I know a lot about lumber and, and remodeling and stuff. Yeah. But now I'm the department supervisor of plumbing. Ooh, OK. And, you know, you know, plumbing to me was, oh, yeah, I know how to change a sink, you know, fix a toilet and whatnot. But, man, oh, my Lord, do you know how many certain little things and this and that and did that neither do i man i'm <laughs> no, trying to you know learn all that kind of stuff and then plus learn about the uh, uh you know the the money back uh behind the scenes part of uh the the company yeah which is really cool you know um even though i i kind of knew a little bit about that even with guitar center you know i was able to move up somewhat and and then even when i was working at walmart but with this, for some reason, it's just, it's really hit me to where I feel like I'm back at school uh-huh. and, and I really yeah. have to put, you know, all that learning and, and thinking, wanting to learn and try and retain everything. And, um, so now I'm like having to learn like numbers and, and profit and loss and, and yeah. the comp, you know, the business and, side of the, yeah. the, the, the jargon. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and this is what people go to college to business yeah you know? business classes yeah and and i've never had that i mean it's you know for me i've always been simple well, if it's not on the shelf and we got it let's get it on the shelf so we can sell it yeah you know and but you know i'm learning of uh, certain little things you know of you know you sell this and do that and, and you know far more than just selling stuff you know as far as that salesman you always mm-hmm. want to upsell you want to add on this and that you know yeah and uh so i'm learning the money side and, and it's really cool, but it's, you know, some days I'm just like, God, how, well, we told you this. Yes. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Duh. You know? And so now <laughs> here I am, I've got like three notebooks that I have all these notes and it's like, Oh yeah, you told, wait, which notebook did I put that in? You know? And it's like, it's cool, man. So yeah, it's, I dig it though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, and in a way here, here's something that, uh, I, I wanted, to, I was thinking about going back to guitar center. But when I really started thinking about it, because I think it was almost a, a sense of, um, um, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for to uh, not redefine, but to uh, show that, no, I can do this. Yeah. But I also felt like I would be going back. Yeah. You know, and the thing that really made me really see that is that remember when our friend Shane went back yeah. And uh, it didn't quite work out for him, I mm-hmm. guess, or wh- whatever. I, I don't know what the case was. Yep. And that made me think, it's like, well, do, am I just trying to go back to redeem myself? Yeah. You know? And yeah. then the cool thing about it is that when I did come and see you, all of a sudden Austin's the store manager. And I'm like, God, that is, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know? 
And so I'm just like, you know what? No, things are the way they are, man. Yeah. And uh, I don't need to redeem myself for past stuff. All I need to do is be better for this right now. Yeah, for sure. You know? Um, so, I, I, you know, all those things that come into play and, and you try and put into this nice little, your own box, so to speak, you, you just have to know when to just take it out and let yeah. it go. Man. Yeah. Because you yeah. got to let certain things go. You got to be okay with letting things go. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a lot of things in my past that I wish I could go back and say, Oh man, you know, yeah, I was messed up now, but now look at me. That's not what this is about. This isn't about me going, oh, look, 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 look. This is about me going, okay, I, you know, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, but if I, you know, obviously if I could go back and change everything, you know. Yeah, but you would be a different person and, yeah. and not affecting the same lives that you are now. So it's all, yeah, it's all there. Yeah, yeah. Darren. This has been beautiful. It has. It has, man. Thank Um, you, brother. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you uh, agreed to sit down. And I I really hope that your story touches a lot of folks. And, you know. It does. Wow. That's a beautiful thing, brother. Yeah, gets to the right people. Um, So um, you're playing with Haley. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Mondays just alternates. I think the 23rd is your next gig. Uh Uh-huh. Old Town Tavern. Old Town Tavern in Scottsdale. Yep, yep. And... um, narcotics anonymous you would definitely yeah. recommend people going down Most down uh, looking that up uh-huh Perfect. and there's meeting lists and there's all kinds of information um and also you know um if there is something more than you know getting to the meetings there's a, a lot of help um stuff out there um um especially with the scottsdale behavioral center mm-hmm. um that's what got me started and where okay. i was able to go to to figure out which direction I needed to go. Um, You know, so there are a lot of resources out there that can help you get to where you need to get. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And just find the right people to help you do that. Yeah, you know, guiding you to the right places. And uh, there's a lot of people in recovery that you would be very like, whoa. Like you're here, like that type of stuff? Man, I tell you what, and it affects all walks of life. So For sure. we, We are not alone in this and that's, beautiful thing well that's what i was actually going to say that you actually reminded me of my my one of the points that escaped me was that um the um the suicide rate and addiction abuse is higher in affluent neighborhoods neighborhoods where you would think it's like why like Um, when you were mentioning chester and uh and uh, cornell it's like they're affected by um prescribed drug abuse and and depression mm-hmm. when you think that they should have it all made um, sure so and and i know there's been a lot of cases to where people were addicted per to prescription or whatever and then all of a sudden they tried to get off of it and it it messed them mm. up even more yeah you know so getting clean and 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 trying to stop something is uh can be very uh detrimental yeah um, you know, especially with alcohol it, and, and certain things you have to be weaned off and you have to yeah. have the right surrounding to get off of that, to get to the next, um, you know, plateau, so to speak. Yeah. Um, because it's a process, man. That this is isn't something that happens overnight. And, um, well, yeah, you didn't get to that point overnight either. So it's like, no. it's going to take it. If it took you, you know, 10 years to get to this point, it's probably going to take you 30 years to climb mm-hmm. out of it. Yeah, you know, one thing they say is, uh, it, you didn't become an addict overnight. So remember easy does it. Yeah. You know, and, um, and, and you're never cured from this. At least that's what I believe. Um, a lot of people have different thoughts, but mm-hmm. for me, I'm an addict. I will be for the rest of my life. And I, I've heard that. That's common for me to hear. That. And and I I will never be cured of this, but I will not be an active addict. Yeah. You know, um, so, and it's something that I know for me is that I have to continue to work on every day and for the rest of my life. And that's a beautiful thing that I have that opportunity to. You know? Do you have the, oh God, that is the perspective right there, man. Awesome. Guys, Please um, reach out to Darren if you yeah. can find him on the interwebs if you need help. Yeah. And please go check his um, him uh, his and Haley's acoustic set. Do you guys have a name? 
It's it well, it's under Haley's name yeah. because it's his gig. Yeah. Um, but uh, the cool thing that really also warmed my heart is that he did this post on Facebook where you know it's him and uh, it's a Monday night duo acoustic. Uh, yeah. A duo acoustic Monday night, and just to have my name, you know, it's, it's we yeah. all want our name up in lights, but of you course. know, for Haley to do that with me, um, again to me, that's even more than just. Yeah, my name's up there, but for Haley to do that because it's Haley's gig, man. Yeah, and for him to accept me into that gig with him at this um, thing is again, it's a beautiful, and I'm and I'm blessed and and uh, grateful and thankful to have the opportunities. Awesome, guys! Please seek help if you need help. It's out there. Face it. There's people wanting to help. Yeah, and um, just please be ready if you're in that spot. I don't know what else to say, but um, it's been beautiful, Darren. Let's uh, close this out. Guys, thanks for tuning in and um, stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you, Juan. Hey.